Welcome back to the 2023 verdict. Of course, we're starting off with security here today, two days to the big day. And as you've seen there, we've got Mr. Muiwa Adejobi joining us this morning. He's a force public relations officer. Good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning, Chamele. Good morning, Nigeria. I know you know a lot is expected of the police by Nigerians, rightly so. So perhaps we'll just start from um, how is the police preparing for these elections? Well, I, like, like I always say, uh, uh, election is not a real thing. It's a process with faces. And generally it's free during and post-election period. So the police has been in the forefront of providing security right from the one of electoral or the electioneering process, party registration, primaries, congresses, up to this moment we are. So the, the police has been on is a civil responsibility is a statutory responsibility to provide security for any election we have in Nigeria. Even local government elections, we are always there, let alone in general elections of this kind for presidential, national assembly, gubernatorial, and the uh, access of assembly elections. So we are fully ready. We have done what we should as a responsible organization to make sure we work with all the security agencies, including the military, to provide adequate security. We've done our deployment based on our threat analysis we have gotten from our intelligence community, the FIB, NIA, uh, DIA, all of them. We, we met and we have harmonized uh, our documents to make sure we have proper deployment. We, we have known where we should have heavy deployment where we should have light deployment, where we should have average deployment. So all these things have been taken care of. And I want to assure the whole world that the, the police and other agencies, they have done proper deployment to cover every polling unit in, in Nigeria, in all the 74 local government areas, and across the 36 uh, states we have, including the federal capital territory. Oh. So the police, uh, like, like you know, we, we believe in the, the principle of five P's. That is proper planning prevents poor performance. So because of that, the IGP uh, has done more in the area of training. Because you, you agree with me, we have a new electoral act as amended 2022. You cannot enforce the law you don't know. So what the first thing we did was to make sure we take our officers and men through the amendments or um, review of the new electoral arts so that we'll be in tandem with the present realities um, in the electoral arts. And we, we started our trainings on 4th of August, 2022, at the ICC when the IGP flagged off uh, training and retraining uh, exercises for proper and better uh, election security management in Nigeria. And this has gone around the whole 20, uh, six, six geopolitical zones. All our formations, the, the 37 commands and 17 zona commands and other formations we have, almost 56 commands. Uh, it's formations, other formations. So we have, we want to have that strong conviction that our men are going out, they have known what they should, they have the knowledge of what to do. And aside from that, the IGP has produced the election duty guideline. It's like a pocket notebook. Uh, it's, for, it's for all police officers and other security agencies that are involved in this election security management. We have done a large number of it and we are giving this to everybody. So we expect you to have it in your pocket, okay. to, to look at it religiously as a holy book, either Quran or the Holy Bible or anything the African traditional religious can use. So everybody has this copy and we expect every, every police personnel and other security agenda will be on duty to be apolitical, to be professional, and of course active on the field, so that we can have a seamless exercise on 25th February for uh, the presidential and national assembly election, and of course on 11th of March for the other elections. So we know that usually when there is a um, you know, off-cycle election, the police has this heavy deployment in thousands, maybe four or five thousand sometimes in a particular state. But now it's spread across many states. So is the police not going to be spread thin uh, for that? Not, not at all. We, 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 we have, like I said, this is a general election that we are collaborating with all other security agencies. Don't forget we have ISIS as Intelligence Consultative Committee on Election Security. Yeah. And ISIS keeps 
on expanding on the levels. Before, when yeah. we started I said we, we were never having the FCC and ISP, all the anti graft agencies were not involved. But when uh, we, we noticed certain dimensions into uh, election security management, mm -hmm. these, these anti graft agencies were incorporated into ISIS. And we, we, we know that it's not possible for police to have uh, our men everywhere. So yeah. that's why all these agencies. And one thing that is sure is that at every polling unit, you must see a policeman, at least a policeman, to be supported by other agencies. Or you see two policemen okay. to be assisted by other agencies. So at least at every polling unit, we are expected to have at least nothing less than three security uh, operatives to be at that very polling unit where we okay. have immediately after that the inner ring we will have hunt men hunt to the teeth that will be doing motorized patrol to give support to those at, at this polling unit who will know by law they are not hunt so okay. the, the the people who are on, on motorized patrol will give cover to them but the the the, the outermost ring mm -hmm. will be the one for restriction okay. of movement so, the military the mobile men NSCDC those who are going to be in charge of yeah. the heavy artillery that will take charge okay. of this. Let me see if I can go over that again. Now, on election day, uh, at the polling units, for instance, if we were to start with taking a look at the polling units, because you've talked about the kinds of people that we should expect to be on those polling units. So tell us, who, who, and who do we expect to see at the polling unit, and how, what kind of proximity to where the ballot box is? Well, at every polling unit, you know, the INEC officials take charge in most cases. Even if there's any issues, they, they are expected to call the attention of security operatives to it. You don't, yeah, let, let me, and in the normal world, we say, we don't, we don't jump. Now, okay, we have seen this. That's, no, no, you need to work with them and they need to give instructions. But apparently, we expect to have active electorates. I, I call them active electorates because they are more than 18 and they have their PVCs. Inactive electorates are those that are more than 80, but you don't have PVC. So, so come if you are, we are not active electorates, oh. there's no need for you to go out at all. You don't need to go out at all, let alone go into a polling unit. If you are not having your PVC, please stay at home. I'm sure channels are going to run everything 24 hours live, yeah. or most of our media houses will run this thing. So stay glued to your TV at home, enjoy yourself. Don't come out and cause problems, because they are the one... Don't even go and play football. No. Mm, depends on the locality you have, okay. the area you have, but not to go and play football and, and, and block and, and cause problems for those that are on essential services. We've seen cases where they barricade the road, they're playing ball, people on essential services will not be able to go, there won't be thorough fear for them. No, if you want to play football, you can just go to a place not to cause any problem or to, to hinder a smooth running of the electoral process. Fine, we are not saying you should not play football. Okay. But active electorates are those that we expect to, 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 expect to see at the mm -hmm. polling unit, party agents are to be there. And those that have... That's the inner ring now? Yes, the inner ring. That's the, the main polling, polling booth itself. Okay. So but the they, officer that will be there would not be armed? No, 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 no. they are not armed. They're so not now armed. there's another it's, ring. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a three-ring thing, okay. a system. The innermost one that's polling unit not armed. The middle one, armed men on motorized patrol. They'll be moving up and down. At least will give buffer to those at the polling unit in case there's any problem. And these are commanded by assistant commissioners of police and the likes, because we have done deployments to take care of every local government. Every senior officers, at least an assistant commissioner of police in, in charge of a local government. Where we are having almost two, three, four, and depends on certain areas, commissioners of police. So in a place, you may have three, four, five, six commissioners of police to take charge. Then to be coordinated, a senatorial district, an assistant inspector general of police. Then the whole geopolitical zone will be commanded by a DIG. So the DIG representing that zone will be the one in charge of that geopolitical zone. Is that the third ring? No, no, no. no I'm talking, so the third ring will be basically for restriction of movement. Okay. Then and out, local governments, towns, villages, hamlets, we have done this deployment to take care of this. Because we believe that if you have um, adequate restriction of movement, we are almost 80% successful into that election process. One man, single man, cannot come to a polling unit and ask all of you to lie down and he wants to disrupt your electoral process. You are going to overpower him. So when they move in numbers, large numbers, in groups, that's when they can disrupt electoral process. So if you don't allow them to move in numbers, that's not how they want to do it. And we are very, very serious about it. We have given announcement yesterday, we made pronouncement yesterday, 12 midnight, 
to 6 p.m. On 25th February, no movement. We know this is my inconvenience having people, but you just have to do it because so that I want to have full grip of this election uh, security management. And for those who are on essential services, they know themselves, they are allowed to go out, accredited observers, accredited journalists, um, people in hospitals, ambulances responding to medical emergencies, firefighters, and there are some people that we have considered that we might uh, give a waiver to. Those that manage the uh, websites, Wi-Fi connections, internet, and other places, based on the request or consultation with INEC we have done. So INEC has given a list of those that might be considered, and INEC has gone ahead of it by even providing tax for them. The way we have done for our men that are going to be on duty to, everybody must be with his tax, including me. The IG has his own tag. Everybody will have his own tag. And this has been extended to all other security agencies. The moment you have been detailed to be on duty for election day, you must have your tag. So you if we your see position. any police officer who doesn't have a tag, how should people respond to him? No, he's asking them to do I don't it. think it's, it's possible. If you want to see anybody without a tag, maybe perhaps an escort to like the IG that is going on. And I even think all of them should have because we made enough for everybody to have. So we're going to have almost every policeman. You know, as we have the as we have the electoral duty election duty guideline, mm -hmm. that pocket book. Yeah. We we have tax for everybody. Everybody. So anyone asking anybody to do anything, the police person must have a tag. Have so a tag. what about other security agencies? Should the same they, have, thing, the same they all thing. have to have everybody, tags. Everybody. So for election, election duty, duty tag. You must have election duty tag. Okay. Everybody that has been assigned or that has a role to play on election day must have a tag. Even if people should come out and cast their votes, uh, we are good to go. And we want good governance in Nigeria. If you don't have good electoral process, you cannot have good governance. So we want the old Nigerians to come out. Those are threatening us. They threaten you, they threaten security operatives. So we are all out for them. But you cannot overpower the government. It's not possible. I will not allow such a thing to happen in Nigeria that a group of people or certain individuals want to run down this state. It's not going to work. So we're going to have these elections everywhere, every corner, every angle in Nigeria, and we are good to go. And we hope all members, all officers and men of the force will have this sense of responsibility with which you speak. Uh, part of the critical functions of the force is, you know, to escort sensitive election material. And I wonder, amid election transmit, electronic transmission of results, also to es escort, you know, partially a movement of results. So neutrality is also critical and, you know, officers have been charged to be neutral uh, throughout the exercise. So in that regard, Mr. Adijobi, talk to us about welfare of the force. What's it like? And if state governments are providing any form of welfare support for members of the force in the state governorship elections, if this will not impact in any way on the neutrality of officers of the force in the discharge of their duties in this election? Well, I, I'm sure you know welfare uh, packages go beyond just monetary things. We have taken care of so many things to protect the welfare of uh, officers and men are going to partake in this election. Uh, starting from insurance, don't forget the IGP has just registered Nigerian Police Insurance Company Limited. That's going to take care of everything. So we, 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 I can sell our lives and everything we have uh, insured now with the efforts of Inspector General of Police. Aside from that, we have procured uh, uh, body armor, that is uh, bulletproof, bulletproof vest, ballistic element, knee guard, ankle guard, and all those things that will protect that policeman that is going out there. And you can see that we have almost, almost every state in Nigeria uh, with, uh, having um, APC, sorry, APC now, not, not APC as a party, armored personnel carrier to take care of our men. These are, these are part of these uh, good welfare packages the IGP has done. And of course, for election duty allowance, the president has been so kind enough to give approval to certain demands uh, of the Inspector General of Police. And every policeman that partake in election duty, we have his entitlement, even before they set out. As I speak with you, they have been disbursing this fund. The money will go directly to them. They are not paying to a commander or somebody that will be giving excuses at the end of the day. You give us your account detail we send to you. And we have account details of every police 
Pastor Ned. So we have been doing this. But let me clarify this so that tomorrow somebody will not say yeah, the edges owe me 30 months, 25 months uh, attachment. No. If you are not leaving your, your, your state, your command or your formation to another state, you will not be entitled to certain uh, allowances. We, there are what we call DTA, digital allowances. When you leave, for instance, leave Abuja for, for Nasarawa or Kaduna or Oyo or uh, Ikiti to go and do election duty, you are entitled to uh, uh, digital allowance. But for those, if you are in your state and you are working in your state, you may not expect any, any special allowances aside from the general money the IGP will be sharing to everybody. So I think people, we have the nominal role of uh, every uh, formation, every command, zona, states, and formations we have. So we are going to do payment based on this nominal rule. And for those that are headquarters too, they are entitled to one or two, one or two things. I, I can even tell you that the IGP has encouraged CPs to make provision for filling for those that will be working in various services. Like headquarters now, the IGP has approved money for us to chop. So if you guys from that I can come and visit me in my office, I'm going to take care of you. So we have done a lot to make sure that we have a robust web package for our officers that partake in these elections. And so many other things are the pipeline. I think IGP is considering to do so many other things. Uh, maybe after this program, we are giving approval uh, to carry out certain things to make sure our men go to the full smile. We don't want any of them to be at the mercy of any politician or any big man uh, at, at any village, anywhere they are. We don't want to say, all right, that is, sir. We, are, we are here, sir. Your boys are here, sir. We don't want to hear that. They have been trained not to, to do that, and we think, we hope that they will not misbehave. For, for, for those who are deviant, who may want to remain deviant, it's a normal thing in any society. We are ready for some of our men that are going to be deviant. We are going to deal with them decisively because we have mechanisms to check them. Uh, right. The monitoring unit is out, escort is out, and other check meeting mechanisms have been put right. in place. All right. to caution some of these are men that might want to be deviant on the field during this election. So no restriction of movements from midnight of Friday. That includes motorcycles as well, does it? <laughs> any means yeah, of transportation. Any means whatsoever. Even leg that is not accredited <laughs> must not move. Leg. So you heard. So be warned so that everything, we have to make sure that these elections go very well indeed. Uh, thank you very much indeed uh, for coming on today. Moewa Dejobi, Force Public Relations Officer. We will be back in just a moment. Stay with us.